Well, a new species of bacteria has been named after Singapore. Researchers say the latest discovery could be key in deepening our understanding of infections. Staphylococcus singaporensis, as it is named, was discovered during an analysis of skin and wound samples. It is part of a family of bacteria that commonly causes mild skin and wound infections, as well as bloodstream infections, which could be fatal. For more, we're joined by Associate Professor Raymond Lin, who is a part of that research team. Professor Lin, now, congratulations, first of all. Now, most of us get skin infections, you know, from time to time. But who might be more susceptible to this particular bacteria? So, yeah, right. So we only have about a few isolates or a few of these cases so far. And we don't have the full picture, but um, this belongs to the group of Staphylococcus uh, bacteria, um, which apart from normal people getting skin infection, as, as you mentioned, in particular, the elderly may and, and immunocompromised may have more severe infections like pneumonia, bloodstream infections. And one group in particular, those with diabetes, they are also prone to like collection of pus under the skin, which you call abscesses. And this may lead to further complications and, and, and blood infections. Oh, Social Professor Lim, uh, common antibiotics, uh, at least so far, we know they do work against this new species. And that's unlike other bacteria in the same complex, which have developed multi-drug resistance. Now, seeing that we already know this, does this mean when we treat conditions that arise from this bacteria, will we, we do not need to be developing new kinds of antibiotics? We can just work with what we already have. Yeah, so the encouraging thing about Singaporeans is so far, they seem to lack uh, most of the antibiotic resistance genes. Obviously, we only have, uh, have six cases which we de detected. And so we hope that with new diagnostic uh, methods, um, if globally people can look for it, then we can know whether it's true that, that most or if all of the same Singaporeans also have a lack of antibiotic resistance. If that's in fact uh, true, then it's good news because each time you get diagnosed uh, with this, organism, it means that it's easier to treat. So one of the priorities is to find out how frequently this occurs. We estimate in the hospital it may occur maybe uh, one or two percent of staphylococcal cases, but we don't quite know in the community how, how often it is, and this is a subject of uh, further research. Thank you. Uh, th that's a good point. I was, I was wondering whether you and your team are going to, in fact, conduct further research on this bacteria, and I ask because uh, I'm wondering how it's going to feed into how useful it will be for future infectious outbreaks. Yes, so this will be a multidisciplinary um, follow-up by different research groups. In fact, we have made the strains of the bacteria available globally. So worldwide, any researcher can have access to the strains as, as well as they can look for their own strains. And in, in Singapore, um, we hope to do several lines of research one is what I call basic laboratory research, which is to find out exactly what genes there are, what proteins they code for, and what these proteins do, and have experimental systems in the laboratory to see if they are more or less virulent and what kind of uh, disease, diseases they may potentially cause. Now, apart from the basic laboratory research, we also need to collect cases, and this can only take place with time over a few years, so that we can understand clinically, that means what kind of diseases patients get, do they get more of one or the other? And in terms of what we call epidemiology, who gets them, uh, which are the risk groups of patients who are actually infected with this bacteria, and if they may in fact be carried uh, normally in normal persons without disease at all. So, so those are many questions which need to be answered um, um, by clinical teams, public health teams, and as well as laboratory uh, researchers. Oh, thanks so much for all that. Associate Professor Raymond Lin from the National University Hospital and the National Center for Infectious Diseases.